You can make Okay, hi everyone. Welcome to our third Slate Live. My name is Michael Pizzolides. We have George Achilleos behind the camera and we have the beautiful model here, Faye, with us as well. Hello. So thank you so much for everyone for tuning in. What we're going to do today is we're going to give you a little bit of some tips of a step-by-step -step education on this lovely short haircut. So what we've done right now is we've separated into two major zones. One is the front area and the second one is in the back. And so what I've done from there is I've found out where the natural parting is and I've separated one side and I've separated the second side. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to go straight in and I'm going to work on the back. The back is going to sit into this lovely tight graduation and it's going to come very tight into the neck and we're even going to do a little bit of scissor over comb in the bottom. So it's going to have this nice little faded graduation and then it's going to come shorter into the sides and have a little sweepy fringe. The hair is currently undercut, so the bottom is actually undercut from the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to have a visual blend with it today as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in. And as always, if you have any questions, let us know. If the live is finished and you want to come back and watch this again and ask some questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. So what I've done is I've started this by taking a section in the middle of the back and it's a little triangle section. The reason this is, is you can see it goes shorter in the top and then it works to a wider base at the bottom of the nape. And what this is going to allow me to do is keep a very stable guideline. So this top section here is going to be my guideline for the whole of the haircut. So I'll do my first section and then what I'll do is I'll be pivoting round. And so by keeping this as the top always, it means that I'm going to have a very, very secure guideline. So my guideline isn't going to move around. It's just going to stay at that top section. So coming in and deciding how much graduation I want and how tight it's going to go. What I'm thinking is it's going to be very tight at the bottom of the neck. And for that reason, my fingers have to point very much towards the nape. So I want to end up being finger length when I get down here because I want it to come really tight into the neck. And so that's the reason why my fingers are angled right now so close to the neck. Sometimes it's hard to get into this area. And so what I do is I just put the head slightly down and then I can come in again and take it tighter into the neck as well. And so guys, if anyone's listening, we would love to hear from you as well. We love hearing people when they leave their comments. So as we said, even if the video is finished and you want to ask us some questions, feel free. So what we've done now is we've worked the graduation from the top to the bottom. And we have a little bit of hair left at the bottom here. Now, it's very hard for me to get my fingers in this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse my fingers and I'm going to come in tighter from the underneath. So if you just watch, we're going to come in a lot tighter and we're just going to be working in this area now. So you can see now I'm very close to the neck. I'm in very, very tight towards the fingers at the moment. So I'm finger length at the bottom there. So once we've done that area, we have our guideline for the rest of the haircut. So we have this lovely bit of graduation, which comes in nice and tight. Now, one thing I want to speak to you guys about is about your sectioning. Now, sectioning isn't the be all and end all of your haircut, but it's really going to encourage you to do certain things. And so when we take a section that sits from the very top of the head, as you've seen now, from the very top all the way to the bottom, and you work it from the top to the bottom, what you're doing is you're encouraging the hair to actually sit flatter. And what I mean by this is, if you decided to take your section and work just the bottom area first and then work the top afterwards, you would end up with something heavier. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. If you just take a small section and you work from the bottom and then you keep working up, you're generally gonna be heavier. If you start from the top, and you work your way down, you have a tendency to make the graduation a little bit flatter to the head. And because we want to go for something that's really tight, 
in the nape area, it means that we want to definitely go for something that's flatter. So we don't have such a weird difference in the, in the balance. So we want to see a nice visual balance. So we don't want to have the, the hairline here really tight and then end up with it looking too weighty at the top or, or too mushroomy, too sticking out. So that's the reason why we're coming from the top all the way to the bottom. We're starting from the top and we're working our way down because this encourages the hair to sit flatter and slimmer. And so again, when I'm taking my section from the top, I'm not putting more hair into my first guideline. So remember, this area stays the same. So you can see when I start my section, I actually start it a little bit further away from the top. So when I pull the hair in, there's actually no hair to cut at the top. So I have a stationary guideline. And that's very, very important to have a stationary guideline. What you don't want to do is you don't want to have a guideline that travels because you will not have a balanced guideline. So it's very important if you want to have that consistent weight line from the top of your graduation in order to pivot and make sure that you take your section and there's nothing left to cut in the top section here. So that's why that stays as a stationary guideline. Now, you know, what we're doing now is we're creating a nice technique, but we're also creating shape as well. So the way we define shape is we define it from left to right. So what you're looking at when you see the hair from the top to the bottom is what we call our technique. So if we look at the hair from the top all the way to the bottom, this would be our technique zone. So in this case, our technique is graduation, as we said. So we're working through that nice graduation. But what about our shape? And so the way we define the shape is from left to right. And if we look at the hair from left to right, we can see that it ends up being shorter in the middle and it starts to get longer as you work from the center and you work further out, it starts to get longer. And we have a tendency to call these types of shapes triangular, or some people like to call them A-line. There's many different words for them, but they all fundamentally mean the same thing. They all mean that you're going shorter in the back of the head, and you're getting longer as you work your way towards the front. And so today, what we're doing in the back here is we're starting off with a triangular shape. So it's going shorter in the middle, and it's going to end up with more weight towards behind the ears. And what I'll then do is after that, we'll show you how we're going to incorporate the front and that disconnection that we have as well that we have to play with afterwards. And so what I always like to do is once I've worked from the top to the bottom, I like to always go back and work from the bottom to the top again. What this does is it catches any little, um, what can we call them, indiscrepancies, any little problems that you've created, maybe some finger marks, maybe some weight lines. So by just traveling front and back, it allows you to grab anything you might have missed the first time around. So it's almost like a little cross check as you work. And what it'll do is it'll allow you to not have so many mistakes at the end. So we hope the quality of the video is good, guys, because, you know, always we have a little bit of a problem with internet in this area, but it seems to be, George is giving me a thumbs up behind the camera, so it seems like we've got some good Wi-Fi signals, so I'm really happy that you guys can see this properly. So what you can see is I'm just working around the head still. I'm just taking small sections, pivoting around the top of the head shape. It's almost like when you're peeling an orange, you know, if you're peeling an orange, you're taking these triangular slices from the top of the head and you're working your way down. So the more I have a tendency to pull back, the more length I'm going to get in towards the front. So by deciding what kind of shape you want, you then have to think, well, how much? Do I want something that's going to be very triangular? What I mean by this is, do you want something that's going to end up very long in the front? In that case, you need to actually pull the hair further away from the head. The more you pull the hair away from the head, the longer the hair is that you get left with. And so by deciding how much triangle you want to see, decides how much you should pull the hair back or not. So I'm now incorporating my last section. And then we have the front, which we've sectioned off from before. So I took my section from the widest point of the head, from the highest point of the head, 
because I felt like this was going to give me a really nice vision to create this beautiful graduation in the back. Now, the two sides are not going to be the same at the end because we have a side parting. And so by taking the back and doing the back first, what I'm doing is I'm creating balance for the rest of the haircut. So what I'll have is I'll have a guideline of the back because I've taken a large section and I'll use this back area as my guideline to make sure we have a nice flow from the top. So this is not finished, this is a work in progress. We've just done one side. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spin the chair around and I'm gonna show you how we do the second side as well. Now, the second side is actually just a repetition of the front. Can you see okay, George? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So again, I'm just gonna show you from the top here, we just take a little slice of hair and we make sure that in the top section we have a nice guideline to work with. So we're just going to move the hair out the way so we can see better. I'm going to put in a little clip for you guys as well so it's nice and secure. There's nothing wrong with using clips. I try and use these very small clips. Just pop your head down a little bit of fade, thank you. So we just try and use the smallest clips possible because we don't want to disturb our vision. We want to be able to see what we're doing. And so it's very important that we don't want to be cutting blind. What I mean by this is we want to be able to see as much as possible. So we want to see the natural root movement. We want to see how the skin reacts. We want to see um, generally the head shape always. And so by working like this with these small little clips, it gives me a better vision of what I'm doing and it stops me getting lost as well. Because a lot of hairdressers end up getting lost in their work. And what I mean by this is they start off with an idea and slowly, slowly, the idea ends up changing as they work because the hair's actually forcing them to do something that they didn't decide to do at first. And so by having this much control of the hair, you are controlling what you're doing and in terms of manipulating the hair. So we are, by controlling the hair, we are really making sure that we're manipulating the hair into the correct shape that we're looking to have. And so again, we're working from the top to the bottom because this allows us to slim the hair down more. So we're looking to slim the hair down now and have this graduation but not a very, very heavy. As you can see, it's quite a flat graduation we're creating here. Perfect. And so just moving the head down, we're gonna take another little slice. And you can see a lot of the time with hairdressing, it's about repetition. And it's about repetition, but doing everything very consistently when you repeat it. So the more consistently you repeat it, the more of a clean, precise shape you're gonna have. And so by having that top section you see out, it means that what we're doing is we're actually going to have a very, very nice, a very balanced ending up graduation. So our graduation is going to end up really nice and balanced because of that consistency with the guideline, with the top area. So yeah, again, just pivoting round, making sure my fingers are the same length away from the head. So in this case, very tight, because we're going for something very tight in the nape. We're gonna do even tighter after we finish. But this is just getting our basic shape in as well for you guys. Okay, so as always, if you have any questions, let us know. So that'd be really nice. And yeah, if you pass me the water, please. Thanks, boys. So water is a very, very important thing. It's about having, again, consistency. So for me, water gives you a lot of control. And the control is a very, very, very important thing. And so always you have more control when the hair's wet. So now that the hair's wet, we're going to have consistency with it. And it's going to be much easier to take our sections when the hair's wet. So if the hair's wet, it's much easier for you to take your sections because the hair will hold its place much better. You can also see the root movement much better when the hair's wet. And so it gives you an all over better vision of what you're doing.
And for me, it's always about having a better vision of what you're doing. <coughs> Mike, we have a question. Oh, I love questions. <coughs> it's from Peter LaMonica. Ah, hi, Peter. Are you doing section on section and then over directing as you get to the ER area? Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm slowly over directing more and more as I get towards the ear. The reason for this is, as we said before, we're looking to create a triangular shape. And so by creating a triangular shape, it means that there's less over direction in the middle and there ends up being more over direction as we get towards the ear. So as I was showing everyone before, the more your fingers move away from the head or the more you over direct back, the longer the hair gets. So if you wanted to have more length behind the ears, it's better to pull the hair more back so you have more hair that falls afterwards. If you want something that's going to come tighter behind the ears, you're better off to have less over direction and go closer. So it's all about how far your fingers are away from the head. The way I like to think about it is that if you can imagine this, it's all about how far your fingers are away from the head shape. I'm just finding my last section there. So it's all about how far away your fingers are from the head shape. So if you can imagine, if my fingers are here, the hair's going to end up being really short. But the more further away my fingers are, the more length is going to be when it falls. So if my fingers are further away, it's going to end up falling longer. If my fingers are closer, it's going to end up falling shorter. So I'm always thinking about how far away my fingers are from the head. So I'm never thinking to myself, oh my god, I have to have 72 degrees of elevation and over direction because it's impossible to think in that way. So what I try and think about is where the hair is going to fall. And so when I pull at a certain place, I have to visualize in my mind when the hair falls, where is it going to fall to, and is that the length I want. So I hope that answers your question. If it does, give us a thumbs up. If it doesn't, just leave us a comment and we'll be more than happy to go over it again. But thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of a cross check as well. And so the cross check, we're just going to work through this center section and have a lovely little cross check through the center section first. And then we're going to cross check either side. Now we know in life, nothing is ever perfect. Perfect is, uh, you know, something that you try and attain throughout your whole life. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and refine this to make it as perfect as possible. So what I'm doing is I'm only focusing on the middle and I'm making sure that the middle is the same from left to right. So what I'm doing is I'm looking from the hair from left to right and I'm making sure it's the same. So the way I do this little trick is I push the comb to make sure I get a clean section. I actually pick up the hair and then I grab that little area I'm working from and I refine it from left to right. One thing I don't care about right now is the hair from the top and the bottom. I don't care about my graduation at the moment because the truth is I did everything quite vertically so normally the technique is quite solid but you always have a little bit of an issue with shape sometimes. So what I mean by shape again is I mean the hair from left to right. So what I'm doing is when I'm picking the hair up I'm looking left to right and I'm just making sure that the hair is nice and balanced. So there's no bits sticking out, there's no imbalance in the work. And this is going to give us a really nice guideline afterwards to start refining the rest of the haircut. What I mean by that is the left side of the graduation and the right side of the graduation. And so there's nothing wrong with taking off whatever needs to be taken off from here. But what you can see is I'm not taking off a huge amount of hair. I'm taking off what needs to be done to refine the haircut to make sure that from left to right we're balanced. That's all I care about right now is the balance from left to right. And you can see it's already getting smoother as well. You know, and we haven't even scissor over combed it, refined it or anything like that either. Beautiful. So that's the top area. So what we've done now is we've just refined the center section, taking these nice little horizontal sections. Now, one thing you want to make sure when we're doing that area I just showed you is that you're not over elevating it. So what I mean by this is if you did the graduation at this angle, it's important when you're cross checking to not lift it up too high. You have to keep it consistent with the same angle. If you elevate too high, you're going to end up seeing more hair and cutting too much off. So if you've cut it at a certain angle, when you're cross checking, make sure you cross check at that angle as well. So what I've done is I've cross checked the center. Now I want to cross check the two sides. 
So I'm just going to take a little bit of hair from behind the ear, I'm going to pull it down, and I'm going to start to feel the length that we have, and make sure that it's the same on both sides. That feels good to me. So what I want to do is I want to start refining from one side to the other. So guys, thank you so much again for tuning in. And what you can do is you can ask us as many questions as you like. We love answering questions. So if there's anyone that's watching this and there's something that they don't quite understand, we'd be more than happy to explain it in a little bit more detail or about any haircut for that matter. So what we're doing is we're combing the hair from the corner to the center. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect our guideline from the corner and our guideline in the middle and make sure the flow is really nice. So we lift the hair up and any little indiscrepancies, any little bits of hair that stick out, we're just going to cut those. But it's not a major change. We're not looking to redesign the haircut now. We're just looking to refine our shape at the moment. And so taking these nice sections that work our way from the corner where the ear is all the way back to the middle so that we have this really nice flow and that's what it's all about right now it's about getting that flow making sure the hair just sits nice and beautiful naturally because Faye actually doesn't do a lot to her hair so we want something that's going to be really nice when she just gets out the shower and lets it dry naturally Beautiful. So you can see again, it's just the consistency of working. Now the elevation I'm doing is also the same. I'm working very, very consistently with my elevation. The same that I used when I created this technique and this shape. So we're just looking to have the same elevation as we work. And we can see that the hair is blending nicely and it has a nice movement to it as well. So I'm really happy with that. As we work towards the top of the head, we're just being a little bit careful again. I try not cut too close into my fingers because I want to make sure that I can see what I'm doing. A lot of people cut very, very close to their fingers. And the real sad thing is that if you cut so close to your fingers, what you'll find is actually everything looks right. You can't really see your mistakes because you don't get a vision of what you're doing. You get very involved in the minute details, and then unfortunately, a lot of the time, not everything blends off. I'm gonna be moving to the second side. So I'm happy with that. I think it's sitting really nicely. So we're just gonna work through towards the second side now as well. How are you doing there? You okay? Yeah. Good. You excited to see the back? Yes. Good. We've got a lot of fun coming up with the back as well. So I'm just going to jump to the other side, so I'm not so much in your way, George. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do the same thing we did on the first side. We're going to be curving our sections from the corner of the ear, and we're going to incorporate the middle as well. This way, we're going to have a really nice vision of what we're doing from the front to the back. Maybe if I turn the chair a little bit and put the head down, that's great. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the middle, and I'm trying to make sure that there's a nice flow between the sides and the middle. So just comb it down, nice and wet. You can see when the hair's wet, it's much easier to control as well. So guys, if you like George's filming, give him a thumbs up. We need to show him some love. We have an amazing cameraman, and he's also our principal here at Slate Hair. You got a nice feedback. Oh, nice. <clears throat> 29 years doing here, three times at Sassoon Academy in London, and your explanation is just fantastic. Thank oh, you. Thank you so much. That really means the world. From Karen Helmuth Singings. Thank you so much. No, that, that really does mean the world to us. You know, we, we try our best to give a really easy and effective way to learn how to do hair. Um, it's not rocket science but a little bit of an easy explanation I think goes a long way and that's what I had. I was very lucky to have very good mentors who gave me some really easy and effective ways to learn how to manipulate hair 
and I feel very blessed to be able to give it back as well to everyone. So thank you everyone who's actually watching. We really, really appreciate the time you take and we hope that you're going to try these techniques out when you get back to the salon and you should let us know how it goes. Send us a picture. We'd love to see it. We're also going to start doing these slate lives once a month. So if there is a specific haircut that you do want to learn, feel free to let us know and we'd be happy to try and do a live for it. So that's our basic refinement done. Obviously it does need more work. It definitely needs a lot more work done in the outline, but I'm going to go slowly and I'm going to worry about that a little bit afterwards. I can see that there's a lot of root movement here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to allow the hair to sit a little bit slimmer by just pulling the hair out from the corners. What this does is it allows the hair to sit a little bit smoother and a little bit flatter in the corners. So now if we bring the head back and we comb it, we can see that it's just, just sitting a little bit slimmer and a little bit flatter in the corners. So we try and work with the root movement, not against it. As we said, we want Faye to be able to just get out the shower and, and it fits it for it to sit beautifully. So I'm happy with where we are with that right now. Now we're going to start to incorporate the sides of the haircut as well. And I can start to show you how it's going to look from the side. So as we said, I'm Michael from Slate. This is the beautiful Faye as well. So when Faye came in, she had this cool haircut done by her friend, which is always fun. And it has an undercut. So if we come a little bit closer, George, what you can see is you can see that this undercut sits here. And then we have the rest of the length, which sits over the top. Now it's really nice, but I want to have something that's a little bit more blended. So what I'm going to do first is I'm actually going to decide my sectioning. Obviously, because it was done by Faye's friend, we just want to maybe clean it up a little bit more. And so I'm going to be disconnecting for now this top area and I'm going to have it out of my way so I can focus on cleaning up that undercut. Now, one thing for me about design is that a lot of people when they're designing haircuts or they're designing anything in general, they have a real tendency to try and change everything you know, throw it all out, start again. But I think the best kind of designers are the ones that can work with what they have and make more tweaks to it. So <clears throat> it's not just about how much hair you cut. So you don't have to actually cut off loads of hair to be a good hairdresser. That's not the sign of a good hairdresser. I believe a good hairdresser is someone that can take off a small amount and make a big difference. So they can refine a design instead of having to redesign everything. Okay, so just coming back to this haircut now, what I've done is I've started from the front now with a horizontal section and I'm actually blending it in to the back. So I'm just connecting it to behind the ear. So we still have that nice little bit of wave, but we have this lovely little thing, this little bit of length here. It's just gonna sit a little bit curved towards the front. So by pulling it a little bit back, we're just seeing that that hair is gonna sit nicely. So I find this really easy to do, where you take a section from the front to the back and you connect it. Now, one great thing is because I've done both sides of the back, what happens is when I come from the front to the back, I connect it. And it's going to be really easy to do the same thing on the second side. Now, one thing for me that makes you an amazing hairdresser is someone who can do something balanced. Because balance is very, very, very difficult to do. Obviously, our body position, our hands, everything comes into it. And so one thing is by doing the back first and then just remembering the length you did at the front, by connecting these two dots, you have a very, very good chance of creating a nice balanced haircut. And so any little tricks you can do to make a nice balanced haircut, I believe is worth it. You know, what I tried to do was, uh, I tried to understand a little bit better, you know, some things about beauty within the face. You know, obviously everyone wants to know what, what is the perfect face shape? You know, what makes someone beautiful, basically? And I believe the answer, personally, for me, is not what everyone else thinks. You know, everyone kind of says, oh, it's an oval face shape and this is suitability and all this stuff. And I don't believe that, you know, what I used to do is I used to work a lot within the fashion industry and you used to see all of these supermodels and you would try and understand what do they all have in common? 
And I couldn't quite figure it out at first. You know, they've all got different noses and different face shapes and different eye colors. And, you know, everything about them was different. They were all models, though. And, and one thing I did realize that they all had in common was incredibly symmetrical faces. So they all had incredibly symmetrical faces. And that made me realize that actually symmetry within a face is very, very important. So I like to do asymmetry, but it has to be placed in the correct way, in the correct place. So you're not accentuating unbalance <coughs> in the face. I've got one more question, Mike. Ah, I love questions. Tell me. Are you just slightly elevating each, each section on the sides? Yeah, so when I worked horizontally, I was deciding my technique. So the elevation that I used decided how heavy my graduation was. And so when I worked for my first section, I was just looking at how heavy I wanted it to be against the head and how much I elevate means it would be more flat. The lower I went, it was more heavy. So I decided the angle that I wanted to, and then I had to elevate each section to that place in order to have the correct amount of graduation. Now what I'm doing though, is I'm cross-checking. And I could actually elevate even more than I had done. Because it's just a refinement. If I elevate a little bit more, what I'm actually doing is I'm going to allow the hair to blend a little bit better. So what I do is a little secret of mine, is I actually have a tendency to elevate slightly more than what I originally did when I did my horizontal sections. This is just going to allow it to blend a bit better. So as I said, if you elevate low when you're doing it horizontally, you can always elevate a little bit higher when you're cross-checking vertically, and that's just going to bring a little bit of softness and a little bit more of a blend, you know, because it's very easy to get weight lines and things like that. So I've done one side, now all I have to do is the exact same on the other. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna take out this little disconnected piece we have from the previous haircut. And so we're just, sorry about the shower face. <coughs> it's okay. Why not? It's hard to get defined. True, it's okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take off a nice little section from the top. And we're going to connect that afterwards again. So, we're just going to move it out our way. So, we're taking a nice balanced section from the one side to the other side. So, we can work in isolation and make sure that we have a good balance before we move on and incorporate the rest of the hair into this haircut. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to take horizontal sections. I'm going to decide the length I want in the front, and then I'm going to connect the back. So one thing I can do is I can check a little bit about the length in the front. So if I hold the front and I pull down, I can have a feeling of how short I can go with this front area. So there's nothing wrong with going a little bit longer than you think and then coming back afterwards and checking. So you can go a little bit longer than you think and you can come back and you can refine it afterwards. So I'm just going to give that a little cross check now. So that's why we always go a little bit longer because sometimes it's exactly what we wanted. So again, working through just going to come around the other side. So working through nice horizontal sections, we're going to comb away that bit. And again, we just take the hair from the front, we decide how much graduation we want to see, because if we have want more graduation, we bring the hands lower, so we have less elevation. And if we want the graduation to be flatter, we have to lift our hands up higher in order to have more layering, let's say, to make it more flatter. So the lower you go, the more heavy it is, the more it's going to stick out of the head. Because remember, graduation as a technique is about building weight. And so the more you have your hands lower, the more weight you're building. So the more it's going to stick out. So remember that. The lower you go with your hands, the more the hair is going to stick out from the head. The higher your hands go, the flatter, the more slimming it's going to be. So as Faye has this beautiful little face, we don't mind to make it stick out. But if we had a client that had a very big head, 
a very wide or you know overweight face a round face we wouldn't perhaps want to go so low we would want to go high with our hands in order to slim the haircut more so it doesn't stick out so much okay so then we have the last section at the top here and then we're going to come through and we're going to cross check it so we always cross check in the opposite direction in which we cut and that means that we've done this horizontally so we're going to have to come back now and cross check this vertically as well for you so i'm just going to try and spin around am i okay there george yes perfect so just working from the top to the bottom and what i can do is i can put all the hair inside and just make sure when i cross check i'm not trying to do very low, little small sections i'm really trying to grab a large amount of hair and make sure that it's all incorporated and it all blends nicely so that's all i'm looking right now is that we have a really nice blend from the top to the bottom i'm going to tighten a little bit behind the neck because we're going to come in and we're going to scissor over comb that anyway Beautiful thing. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We're just going to come behind the ear and we're just going to tighten the hair there because we're going to scissor over comb it anyway. I think Faye's clicking her fingers under there. That's it. Do you ever wonder what your clients are doing underneath the gown? Don't ask. Don't ask. So what we're going to do now, we're going to start to incorporate this top area that's disconnected. And so I have two essential guidelines right now that I can work with. I have the back of the head and I have the front and the side underneath. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking these vertical sections. I'm going to be pulling the hair a little bit back and I'm going to be blending it from the back to the front. Can you see that, George? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Beautiful. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find our guideline from the back. I can see my guideline from the back. And I'm going to start to incorporate it into the sides. And so what I've done is I've used the back and I've used the underneath and I've connected the two. So I could see how much hair we had in the back and where it was placed. And I'm just connecting from the top to the bottom. And so now we have a really nice flow going on between the top and the bottom as well. So again, pulling the hair back. And when we pull the hair back, we see the hair from the last time we cut from behind and we start to blend it. And we have the underneath as well. So again, same principle. We move the hair back. We find out where we last cut it from we connect there and then we connect underneath as well so we have the guideline from the underneath and we have the guideline from the back and each time we move forward we pull it back to the previous cut so we can see our consistent guideline working across the head beautiful so what i've done is this time i've worked vertically and what that means is I'm going to come across and I'm going to start cross-checking this horizontally as well. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lower the chair a little bit. If you tilt your head over for me. Beautiful. So I'm going to start from the back and I'm going to start to cross-check this. So the way in which I'm going to do this is I'm just gonna lift the hair up. So we take a section from the moment we wanna start cross-checking and we lift the hair up and we cross-check across. Now by doing this technique where we're actually lifting the hair quite high up, we're just gonna again be slimming it down. So we wanna just now remove that very heaviness from the top, that weight that we have, because this is also very, very jumpy hair. It has a natural kink to it, it has a natural wave to it. And what we want to do is we want to make the hair be able to move a little bit. So we're actually working with the hair, not against it. So we're trying to encourage the hair to not sit too heavy so that it can really move and do its thing. 
So as we said, we cut vertically. So now we're coming back and we're cross-checking horizontally. And again, working through towards the front. So there's actually a systematic way of working. And by doing this way, where we cut first and then we cross-check afterwards, we're just making sure that we haven't missed anything. Obviously, you know, there's probably a million hairs on someone's head and it's very easy to get a little bit lost in it. And so by working in this methodical way, we're just allowing ourselves to not get lost when we work. Looking good, I like the movement in it. And we just need to refine it as well afterwards. So yeah, nice little bit of jumpiness to the hair, but I quite like that as well. And we have the length coming through. Perfect. So now we have our last section to go from the top on the second side. So when we cut it, we're going to be doing the same principle that we did before. So always nice and wet and consistently wet so that we have more control of what we're doing. Obviously, as we said, everything is about control when we work. So we're trying to control the hair when we work. So for those of you that have done classes with us will know a little bit better about what we're trying to control. We're trying to control our elevation, which is going to help us to create our technique. We're trying to control our over direction, which is going to help control our shape. And of course, we're trying to always work with the correct cutting angles because this is what's going to really decide how heavy or how flat things are going to be, either with the shape or with the technique. So again, what I'm doing, I'm using the back as a guideline and I'm using the hair underneath that we already had already as an undercut as a guideline. So I'm connecting the underneath to make sure it blends and then I'm curving my fingers towards the top of the head and I'm going to start connecting to the back. Just lift it up to do another check. And we can see that everything's starting to blend beautifully. That's another really good reason why starting from the point of the disconnection underneath. Once you've actually blended that, you know that the hair is going to sit really nice. And so what it's doing is it's putting you at ease to know that your haircut is going to have a beautiful blend afterwards. And a really nice shape. So from this point, I'm going to start over-directing the hair a little bit more back so that we have more length in the front for this swept fringe area. And so you can see the length is slowly building towards the front. If you guys are not as confident doing it this way, you can always do it more vertically. And what I mean is I'll show you that in a second. And the last bit. So we're just combing all the hair nicely to the side. We're connecting it at first and then we're moving it up. So it's going to have that slight disconnected in the front area where the fringe is as it's going to come nice and swept over. And we'll show you a nice way to make sure that's going to sit nicely. But you start to see how the hair is going to be moving. So what I mean when I say you can always do it vertically is I mean this. You could always come from the top. If you're a bit scared, you can start from the front and decide the length that you want. So you can say, oh, that's a nice length. That's where I want it to sit. And once you've decided that, you can come from the front and start to work, work your way to the back in order to connect the haircut and make sure everything blends. What I'm doing now is I'm doing the cross check like this. So remember, you could always do the opposite. So what I mean by that is if you've done it horizontally and you cross check vertically, it means you could have actually cut it vertically and cross checked horizontally. So there's always an opportunity to do it the other way around. It's up to you to decide which one actually works for you better. Are you a horizontal or a vertical person? What do you prefer? 
You have to try both out, find your own preference, and then work like that. I personally like to work very horizontally because I feel like I can see and control my shape better. So I can see and control my shape better. And so that's why I personally love to use more horizontal sections. And I always come back vertically to make sure everything blends beautifully with my technique. So in this case, my layering. I'm just making sure that my layering is just really nice and clean. Hope that makes sense to everyone. Give us a thumbs up if it does. Beautiful. So I think that's sitting really nice. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna do one last little check about the blend between the front and the top and the back. So taking slightly more curved sections so I can make sure that from the front to the back, everything blends nicely. So nice curved sections from the front to the back. I'm always looking at the bone structure, so I feel where the bones stick out a little bit and I'm always trying to slim that area so you get more of an even surface. Think about when you're trying to lay the foundations for a house. If there's a bit that sticks out a little bit more, you have to make sure that there's less gravel in that place and there's more somewhere else in order to make sure the shape is really full. And so we work in a similar way. We try and work with the bone structure. So again, I'm just going to take these sections that curve from the front to the back and just make sure that there's no bulky bits. And then I'm going to show you a really beautiful way to make sure that the hair swoops away from the face. Because you know, obviously we want to show off face, beautiful face. That's all part of it. So that's just making sure we have a nice visual and actually technical blend from the top to the bottom. Okay, perfect. So now for that sweepy fringe area. So there's two ways of doing this. But the fundamental thing to remember is short hair pushes long hair. So I'll say that again. Short hair pushes long hair. So what we want to do is we want to create the hair here to be shorter than everything else. So if the hair at the front here is shorter than everything else, what it's going to do is it's going to push the hair off the face. So we're just taking a small section, we're going to bring this forward and we're going to cut it. Now where to cut it? Well you have to think where you want it to sit. I think I want to show off phase cheekbones. So I'm going to measure where the cheekbones are and I'm going to come back I'm going to cut that area. So I'm going short where the corner is and I'm going longer as we work away from the head. And now I'm putting my next section in and slight more elevation and tension. And now we're blending in. So we didn't really take a lot off, but just that tiny bit will encourage the hair to sit off the face. So remember that short hair is a bully. Short hair pushes long hair. And so what you've got to imagine is when you took the first section and you pulled it over, when the hair from the back had to come and connect, it's actually longer. So the back hair is longer than the front hair. So the front ends up being short, the back ends up being long, and it just allows it to push off the face as well. And right now it's doing this beautiful little kink really like that. So we're going to do the same on the other side, we're going to do it slightly different because it's much shorter. We're going to actually pick the hair up. You can see that in my fingers only a small amount of hair is in my fingers right now. So we want that. We want the front to be just that little area and we just go short to long and that's just going to encourage it to sit a little bit off the face as well. Now we're going to do some refinement but first I'm going to give this a very light dry and then we're going to start with our scissor and <coughs> comb. So, I'm just going to grab a hairdryer.
Cool, so I'm not going to bore you by drying the whole thing. I'm only going to dry the back area now and then I'm going to show you my technique for scissor over comb and then I'm actually going to put in a little bit more of a, a wet look product at the end because I think it works really well with this. So, I'm just going to raise the chair up so that you guys can see and I can see a little bit better what we're doing with the scissor over comb. So, I'm just going to take this a little bit looser. So, we keep the head upright now in a normal, natural position. That way, however we do the scissor over comb, what we see is what we get. So, by having the head upright, we can see better what we're doing. Perfect. So, putting the comb in and starting to actually open and close the blade before you even reach the hair. That way, you are actually grabbing all the hair there is to cut. So what I like to do is I actually like to curve the, hair, the comb out when I do this. So I'll show you a little bit actually when it's not in the hair so you can see better afterwards. So what I do is I come in, I actually go in a graduated angle, and then what I do after that is I turn my comb outwards. So I'm actually cutting over the top of the comb rather than on the inside. So we'll do it again for you just so you can see. And from this point, I start curving in on the outside. This gives me more control when I'm creating my shape. So again, we come in, we start to cut the hair from before. And as we go in, we then curve it out so we're only grabbing a little bit from the top and not more. But that's starting to really take a nice shape in my opinion. So again, nice and tight. And then we bring it looser. So if you guys have any questions about scissor over comb, let us know. Certainly the easiest thing to remember is the comb goes slow and the scissors go fast. That way you get a much better blend. Beautiful. So I'm just going to do a little bit behind the ear here, but I actually want to leave a little bit of softness as well. So you can see the way that I'm putting my comb in is I'm being very secure with it. I'm actually angling my comb to leave more length and weight behind the ear, but taking it really nice and tight in the nape area. Beautiful. So one side down, second side to go. Maybe you want to come this way, George, you can see better. So we're coming over the top. We're coming over the top. I will just move a little bit. And so very importantly, we're going in and we're actually cutting hair from even before we hit the hair. What I mean is I'm already opening and closing the scissors before my comb goes inside. That way I'm grabbing all the hair and you should always try and keep cutting until there's nothing left to cut. So that way you work your way from the bottom all the way to the top. Until there's nothing left to cut. That way you get a much smoother blend with your work. nice and tight this area so again trying to leave more length and weight behind the ears
Beautiful. And then I always like to do a little bit of clipper over comb. So I'm using a slightly larger comb now. And that's just going to give me a little element of safety when I work. So you're yeah, just putting the comb in and just doing a bit of clip over comb. And so for me, this is a fantastic way of working. It just brings everything smoothness. So what it is for me is I always use the scissors first to get the shape I want. And then I might just do a little bit of clip over comb just to make sure everything blends nicely. And it's a little bit easier. Certainly with the little hairs at the bottom as well, it's much easier to grab them with a little clipper. Beautiful. So we can take this off now. And what I'll do now is I'll use a big clipper, but I'll actually open the blades so that what I'm doing is I'm actually fading it in with a half number. So those of you that know, when you open this halfway, you're just doing about a half a millimeter of length. And that's just something that's gonna blend it. What I do is I turn it not flat against the skin, but I actually elevate it out. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of moving it away from the head. So it has a tendency to just have a better fade in rather than being very harsh. So I like it more soft on women's hair, obviously. So I think that's looking really nice to me. Let's just blow a little bit of hair away. It's always good to blow hair away and make sure you actually comb the hair with a brush away so that you can see better what you're doing. So when you do scissor over comb, all those little hairs that get left on the skin you, you kind of can't see what you're doing. And so if you really want to see what you're doing better, you're better off to then make sure you brush the hair away off the neck. So by just brushing the hair off the neck, you see what you're really left with at the end of it. Okay, that's looking good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the outlines and then we're done. It's looking really cool. So I just want to clean a little bit of the hair around the ear as well, but we can see the shape coming through nicely. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to move the hair a little bit over to the side so I can see better what I'm doing here. I don't know if it's going to be better for you to come over this way, George. What do you think? So we just try and start from the front. Now I really like this hair we have here in the front. I think that sits beautifully. So I just want to clean it around the ear a little bit. And so we just start from that area and we clean it around the ear a little bit. So I'm just removing a bit of the extra weight behind the ear. So once we've refined the underneath, what we could do is we can really get a nicer blend in and just allow it to keep that softness, but we kind of just expose the ear a little bit. So I like that. I'm gonna just refine a little bit as well. So I'm gonna lift it up and any kind of weighty points I find, I'm just gonna blend it in. So now that we have changed the uh, outline a little bit, there might just be a little bit of excess weight internally, so we're just coming back to refine that ourselves. And that's looking much nicer to me. So let's bring the head back. And that's nice. So I like that little kink that it's all coming out of, and I like how it exposes the ear as well. So we'll just do the same on the second side, and then we can put a little bit of product in and we're done, and we'll show you the end result as well. So again, I'm just going to go very, very softly with this. I'm just going to put my scissors in a little bit softly around the ears. And then I'm going to use my fingers afterwards to just raise it a bit above the ears and behind. 
But remember, every time that you refine an outline, it ends up being weightier internally. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back and just try and remove some of the weight internally as well. So I'm going to put in a little bit of product for you guys as well. Let's blow away. Okay. So at the end, what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to get Faye to stand up and we're going to do a little recap of everything that we've done as well. And then we'll post some finished result pictures as well. So we want to really make the hair look a little bit moistured, you know, it has that frizziness to it. So we just want to really make it almost look a little bit slept in, a little bit like second day hair. So I'm just putting the product everywhere. I'm really putting my fingers through it, trying to encourage the hair to really get everywhere with product. So I'm not worrying about what shape I'm creating at the moment with the product. I'm just trying to make sure that it's really even in the hair. I quite like that though, that's a cool look. Okay, so because this is curly hair naturally anyway, it has a lot of movement to it, I think it's nice that we encourage the movement. So I'm looking to see actually the hair moving in this case. I like the little bit of softness we have in the front as well. And then I'm just going to encourage those little sideburn bits to come out. Yeah, I do love sideburns on girls, I must admit. Okay, and then we're just going to encourage that hair to kind of flick out a little bit more. So I like that as a detail. Cool. So it's a little bit 1920s inspired with that little flick, but it's really quite modern from the sides as well, from the back being so tight. Cool. So we'll just give it another little brush down. We hope you guys enjoy it. We hope you guys learned something. We hope you try it out yourself and let us know what you think. So if you'd like to stand up for me. Beautiful. So thank you very much, Faye. Okay. Yeah. Good. So we'll do a little recap for you guys now of what we did. First, I'm just going to ask you to come into the back. So what we did was we separated the top from the bottom of the head and we worked a center section which we pivoted. So we worked a little triangle, we went tighter in the nape and then we worked from the top all the way to the bottom pivoting round, pivoting round, pivoting round which gave us this really nice graduation which came in tighter. What we then did was we separated an undercut that was already from the last haircut from the top to the bottom and we connected horizontally from the front to the back that we had already cut. So it's from the front to the back and we went all the way up till the undercut was connected, so to about this point on the head. We did the same on the second side. After that, what we did was we lifted the hair up and we connected from what we've already cut in the back to then connected from the top to the bottom. So we pulled it back, we found our length from the back and then we connected from the top to the undercut we had at the bottom. So we worked all the way across the head Forward from me, all the way across the head, from the top to the bottom. So connecting from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom, from the top to the bottom. Then what we did was we worked through this side as well. How did we do that side again? So yes, we did the same thing. Sorry, blank for a second. We took sections which curved from the top to the bottom. We pulled the hair back and we connected from the guideline we had at the back and we connect it to the undercut, so in this kind of a shape you see here. And what we did was we then worked across the head, pulling the head back each time and connecting from the top to the bottom. The front we pulled more back, so we ended up with a little bit more length and a little bit of this lovely kink. 
And that was it, essentially. After that, we, all we did was a little bit of scissor comb at the bottom. So the comb went in, it scooped it, and then the comb actually turned outwards as we just dusted over the top of the comb and we refined it. We hope you really like it. Thank you very much, Faye, for being a part Thank of you. it. It's been amazing. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you next month for our Hairbrain Live on the 14th of August and for our Slate Live in August as well. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for watching.